Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer, so now let's talk silver. This is going to be a very, very telling video, folks. I have a couple different articles we're actually going to break down. First is going to be talking about how silver holdings in London vaults dropped to record lows. We're talking about a diminishing supply and an ever-growing rapidly growing at that demand. Now, we also have Citibank saying that silver is going to shine next year. So we're going to see how bullish they really are. And we even have another one that's just talking about how the silver show is on. This was written 14 hours ago. So we got a lot of stuff fresh off the press. This was written two days ago, talking about the London vaults dropping to record lows. We know that the LBMA and the COMEX came out and said their vaults are damn near empty at this point. And when we're talking about this booming, booming demand over the next decade, I mean, I can't imagine, I can't imagine what the demand is going to look like by the year 2025, 2026, when I think silver has potential to hit triple digits. So yeah, that's the breakdown for this video. As you can see, it's going to be extremely educational and informational, hopefully a little bit of entertainment as well. Make sure to subscribe. I post daily videos every single day. Bottom left-hand corner, that is the best precious metals company on the planet, Miles Franklin. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. They're still one of the only authorized dealers that works with the U.S. Mint since the U.S. Mint cutoff banned everybody from purchasing from them. Nobody can purchase through the U.S. Mint anymore, but Miles Franklin can. It's important to build a business relationship with them as they still can find silver where these other these other companies can't. These other companies are begging you to sell their silver back to them and they're willing to pay crazy premiums because they don't have any. So yeah, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. They'd love to hear it. Let's talk some silver now. Silver holdings in London vaults dropped to record lows. Holdings over physical silver held in vaults across London dropped to record lows in October, according to data provided by the LBMA, the London Bullion Market Association. Right? I mean, numbers don't lie. You can try to speculate, theorize, assume, but the numbers, that is set in stone. You can't argue that. And a lot of people are trying to write off the numbers and just say, oh, this isn't true. But, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Silver holdings dropped to 26,502 tons, down 2.2% from the previous month. The value of holdings stood at $16.3 billion, which is about 883,417 silver bars. This is the lowest amount of silver held in the vault since reporting started in July of 2016, the LBMA said in its report. It's the lowest since they ever started reporting it. So that's telling, right? That that means that they only started reporting this in 2016, and ever since then, they've never seen this. The drop in silver holdings is explained by the robust demand for the physical metal. And just imagine, right, imagine, you know, uh, the the investment sector, you and I all wanting a slice of the silver pie, but then the big tech, the 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 industrial sector as well electric vehicles yada 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 there's going to be a there's going to come a point in time where everyone not just you and I watching this video is going to realize that silver is extremely scarce and it's the most useful metal in the world thing in the world if you really want to get you know get into things i mean we need silver for everything it makes the world go round literally from vehicles to solar panels what's going to happen when People realize we don't have enough of it, squeezing the market. Demand coming from India is also partly responsible for the low inventories. India's demand is up 80% this year. India's demand is booming right now, 80% themselves, not including the rest of the world. Indian October imports appear to have still been sizable, and this is considerably lower than September's near record high of 1700 tons the lower total for October may reflect the impact on the Indian market of higher rupee prices earlier last month um, Our Mumbai team noted that 
the silver demand eased somewhat during Diwali, in contrast to gold, which enjoyed double-digit gains during the festival. The amount of gold held in London vaults also dropped to 9,308 tons. That's down 1.4% from September. So the amount of gold was valued at $490.5 billion, which is approximately 744,662 gold bars. LBMA statistics include the holdings of the London Commercial Vaults and the Bank of England's gold holdings. The UK's central bank does not hold any silver. Analyzing the silver holdings data out of London, um, and this is MKS PAMP's head of metals strategy, said that silver is well positioned for some upside in prices. So not only we're hearing that here, but we're also hearing Citibank as well. The drawdown in stocks is not a silver phenomenon. It's a metal phenomenon. Copper has four days of cover. We are in a shortage economy. But given silver size, relative lack of liquidity versus other precious and base metals, and very strong retail physical demand, it's better positioned for upside momentum. And yes, that's the truth. Everyone talks about silver's price potential from like the dollar point of view, like CPI and interest rates. And my my biggest the, the thing the, the reason I think silver has so much explosive upside potential is the shortage, low supply, high demand. Yes, you also can incorporate the dollar side of things, but for me, it's more fundamentals, right? And it's crazy to think that it's both of those. Each one of those alone would be a, a good enough reason to invest in the silver. You have both of those reasons. It's insane. So silver hit a high of more than four months on Tuesday with December COMEX silver futures last trading at $21.65. That's up 3.49% on day. Both silver and gold prices were boosted by heavy short covering in the futures markets, which perceived bargain hunting in the cash markets and even some safe haven demand as the cryptocurrency markets are selling off. And yeah, crypto's down bad. And, um, you know, as precious metals, physical precious metals and cryptocurrency are both the things that are kind of the rebellious investment since they both go against the dollar since both of those you are in complete control of your wealth you know when, when anything that's pegged to the dollar like stocks and all that stuff bonds and that is going down with the dollars it's like switching seats on the titanic anything pegged to the dollar when the dollar crashes is going down with it but when you put your money transfer that dollar bill into gold or silver you took the power away from them the control away from them you are in control of that same with bitcoin crypto when it's in that cold wallet that's yours now you are in complete control and that's why banks don't like gold and silver you can see why they're going to try to downplay it and say it's a bad investment because they don't want you investing into it they want you investing into things that's that's you know intertwined with the dollar it makes sense but anyways, let's look at what Citibank is saying about silver shining next year. And I'd love for you to also let me know in the comment section what you think silver will do next year. And this is actually pretty pretty interesting because they say Citi predicts silver will slump to $16 an ounce before rebounding. So this is going to be an interesting, a very interesting article. And then I'm also interested to see how this is going to translate into this next article where this guy 14 hours ago said silver's show is on now if it does get down to 16 i think 16 17 dollars an ounce that's going to be a, a very dangerous level for a lot of people a lot of people and that's because a lot of people are going to give up at that level instead of buying it instead of buying low selling high they're going to buy high and then sell low you know they're they're doing it literally opposite of what you're supposed to buy the dips sell the tops don't buy the tops sell the dips and that's how you lose money <laughs> silver's 25 percent fall since march to around 19 dollars an ounce has rattled confidence in the poor man's gold but a series of signals point to a bounce next year with city a leading investment bank penciling in a possible return of $25 an ounce. That price forecast is in the peak of the bank's 
probability-based assessment of silver with $22 an ounce more likely in the first half of next year. Whatever the result, Citi's view of silver is that over the next three to six months, the metal should provide an excellent buying opportunity. And that is good news to my ears. I hope it is to yours as well. I mean, if anyone is going to be mad or worried or fearful if silver drops lower, then you don't understand silver's true value and you don't understand the dollar's true value. Because if silver goes down to $15 an ounce, I'm going to be buying boatloads of it. When silver was $11 in March of 2020, when everyone was freaking out, I was telling everyone, please, this is the perfect entry point that you will not get probably ever again. And what do you know? Everyone was freaking out and selling it. And then it went from $11 to nearly $30 the following year. Could have tripled your money. I mean, and most people bought at $30. Right? It's funny how nobody buys silver at $11, mostly selling it. But then next year when the Wall Street silver train happens, everyone's buying it at $30. And then they're going to sell it, sold, sold it, when it's down to $20 a couple months later. It's just insane how backwards people invest. And that's why it's important to watch channels like mine. Because those people just jump into something, don't understand what they're getting into. And then they just say, oh, I made the wrong decision. Without understanding, silver is a long-term investment. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. No investment should be that. I mean, you've got to understand what you're investing into and why you're investing into something. So anyways, yeah. Let's look at this. However, the bank's... Analysis comes with a warning that tough background conditions, including a strong U.S. dollar, could see silver falling further in the short term, perhaps to as low as $16 an ounce before rebounding. Gold to silver ratio, a second sign that silver could rise next year is the move above 80 by the gold to silver ratio. And that is the perfect tool to see which is the better buy at that time. Gold to silver ratio is how many ounces of silver it takes to equal one ounce of gold. So if the gold to silver ratio is 80 to 1, that means it takes 80 ounces of silver to equal one ounce of gold. If the ratio is higher, that means that gold is outperforming silver. If the ratio is lower, that means that silver is outperforming gold. So believers in the gold to silver ratio, which is a number derived by dividing the price of an ounce of gold by the price of silver, uh, argue that a higher number is a positive sign for silver, whereas low numbers favor investment in gold. I mean, that's backwards, actually. <laughs> they, they said that backwards. When the gold to silver ratio is higher, let's say, like, for example, when the gold to silver ratio was 125 to 1 in March of 2020, silver was $11. So I guess they could be saying that it's a better investment because it's cheap. Okay, I see what they're saying. But yeah, but technically, when the gold to silver ratio is higher, that means that gold is outperforming silver, right? It is. That's a fact. That's not me trying to say this. It's just a fact. When the gold to silver ratio is going higher, gold is outperforming silver. And then, for example, when it started going back down from 125 to 1, when it started going back down to 80 to 1, that was silver outperforming gold, and that's because... And that leads to the ratio lowering because silver is starting to become more valuable or, or you know, um, more equal to gold's price. When it's 16 to 1, that's – of that, that, that mean, I mean, right now, if the gold-to-silver ratio is 16 to 1 with gold at $2,000, that puts silver at, like, what, like $260 or something. Um, when the gold-to-silver ratio is 8 to 1, which is the ratio that comes out of the ground – that puts silver at yada yada. I don't know what the actual, but the point is that the gold to silver ratio is extremely out of whack because it should be what the ratio comes out of the ground, which is seven to one or eight to one, but it's not. It's like 80 to one, meaning gold's extremely overvalued. But regardless, you can use the gold to silver ratio to see which is the better investment at that point in time. Um, it, it's just funny because they worded this weird. When the gold to silver ratio is higher, 
that's not really a positive sign for silver. That means that gold is the better investment at that time because gold is higher. Unless they mean, since gold is so much higher, you should stay away from it because it's higher. But that means that you're making more money if you invest into gold as the ratio goes up. And that's a fact. Not everyone accepts the gold to silver ratio because of its simplicity, but at current prices of $1,666 an ounce for gold and $19.14 an ounce for silver, the ratio is 87. At simplest, the gold to silver ratio tells an investor that silver looks cheap relative to gold. So yeah, I guess, yeah, they were they meant it the way I did. They're looking at it backwards almost from, you know, it's cheaper, so it's a better investment. India demand. Third signal, and this is actually what we were talking about in this last article as well, that India's demand is booming, 80% increase this year. I made a video about that the other day. A third signal is strong for physical demand, uh, for silver in India at least, traditionally one of the big markets for precious metals, and with gift-giving festival seasons on the way, demand from this country could rise even further. I mean, religious uses, jewelry, I mean, yeah, I mean, some of these countries, that's a big portion of where their demand comes from. So for investors, the appeal of silver lies in its close relationship with gold, which is the precious metal trendsetter. But silver also appeals for its roles in a number of fast-growing industrial applications, including electronics and photovoltaics, which underpin rooftop solar panels. Safe haven buying was a reason for this year's silver price surge, which took up to 12-month peak, $26.16 an ounce in early March, shortly after um, the, you know, the situation happened, a time when gold also rose sharply to briefly trade above $2,000 an ounce. And yeah, that's when the gold to silver ratio was around 125 to 1. Gold was $2,000, the highest price it's ever been. That means gold was outperforming silver because silver was only $11 during that time, but then you saw gold at $2,000. So I guess you could say, yeah, silver's a better buy because gold's extremely expensive outperforming silver. If you're going to invest into something, wouldn't you want to invest into something that's undervalued instead of overvalued? Because at $2,000, that's extremely overvalued. So it would be better to invest into the thing that's cheaper, um, worth way less than it usually is. Back then, in a deeply confused market for most financial assets, the gold to silver ratio was sitting below 80, a reading which favored gold compared with today's gold to silver ratio of 87, which favors silver. No, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. I now I see how they're no, they're wrong. If the gold to silver ratio is sitting below 80, that means silver that favors silver, because silver is outperforming gold when it's 80. If the gold to silver ratio is 87, that means that gold is outperforming silver. That favors gold. They're wrong about this. And now the way they worded it makes me seem like they didn't think of it that way. The ratio is higher. Gold is outperforming silver. When the ratio is lower, silver is outperforming gold. That's, that's a fact. I mean, that's mathematically correct. Like, I don't know why they... Maybe they were just... I don't know. Not all banks see silver as moving back to the high prices of earlier this week. Goldman Sachs, for example, has silver sticking to a price of around $19.40 an ounce for the rest of the year before moving back to over $20 an ounce in 2024. I think that's extremely bearish. 2024, just $20. I could, I mean, that's two years from now. Imagine how much is going to happen in two years. Imagine, I mean, look at how much happened two years ago. We saw silver at $11, right, two years ago. Like, like to say that it'll just be over $20 is extremely bearish, and I think he's just trying to cover his own butt by not saying anything too crazy. So, um, ASX explorers that can benefit a rising silver price. It's the confused buy-sell signals, which can help explain why Australia's small band of silver-focused explorers have been struggling for traction. I'm not going to go all into this silver mine. Um, excellent buying opportunity. They say that there's a 70% probability of silver sliding into a price of around $16, $17 an ounce early next year, which is the excellent buying opportunity. Now, probabilities like this, it is more like 7% than 70 
because so many unknown variables. I mean, it's it's crazy when people say, especially throw an exact percentage out because a wrench is going to get thrown in and throw all of these predictions because they're saying that given everything we think is going to happen, which they're going to be wrong on it, probably most, but at least some of these variables is going to change things way. I mean, you can't throw a percentage out there like that saying that 70% probability it's going to go down to that. That is, that, that's crazy to say. I mean, the weatherman can't even get the weather right the, the, the hour before the weather comes in. I mean, unknown variables get thrown in, especially within an entire year. Or I guess they're saying in the next couple of months since it's the end of the year. Regardless, though, take that with a grain of sand. Downward pressure on the silver price includes the strength of the U.S. dollar, a hawkish Fed, the U.S. Central Bank, higher real interest rates, and the medium-term inflation expectations, which were overshadowing declining physical stock at, uh, levels at exchanges. Then they expect silver prices to recover to $22 an ounce in the first half of 2023, as Fed changes stance and investor demand for ETFs rises in China and improves. So they say that our silver supply and demand balance points to a surplus during 2022 as investors shed ETF holdings, duly absorbed by solid physical investment and jewelry demand. So, I mean, there's so much at play here. And you could even see in this article how many different things could happen or might happen or should happen or won't happen. I mean, it's insane to, to try to predict anything. All I know is silver stackers will get the last laugh. And when you look at the bigger picture, not the micro, but the macro, um, you're going to see that silver's a no-brainer regardless of what happens. All this, all this mess, all this stuff is irrelevant when you look at the bigger picture. Silver show is on. Let's see what he's talking about. Silver is at measured targets, but right now on a cluster of resistance. Given that the recent upside volatility, the next session will be crucial as it is hard to foresee a consolidation phase ahead. So this is what the chart looks like. Um, I think right now it's, see what silver's at right now. $21.90. See a huge rise November 10th from $21 up to almost $22. Now there's resistance around here, obviously. I mean, look at like the three month. There's a lot of resistance around that $22 level. So if it breaks above that, we could see something. But regardless, that's what's happening right now. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Like I said, hope you subscribe. We're on the path to 100,000 subscribers. If you want a chance to build a business relationship with the best precious metals dealer on the planet, highly recommend it. Andy Sheckman's the CEO. They've never had a negative complaint in 45 years. They'll always make it right. Um, and uh, that could be extremely important moving forward as silver is going to be harder and harder to find over the following years, harder and harder to get. I highly recommend you, um, you start buying through them. I mean, it's a great company and it's more personal instead of just buying from some random site who you don't know who's filling the order behind the screen. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Send an email to info at Miles Franklin. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Make sure you subscribe. Like the video if you liked the video. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.